Now that's better. <laughs> the old oily can. Who here on this channel and watches this channel has not been in their grandpa's or their dad's garage and took this thing just to hear that sound? I'm telling you. That is a four-inch eagle reproduction can from Joe's Motor Tool. Hello, I'm Scott Schiller for Ron Fitzpatrick G Parts and Team G503. In this video, I'll be showing you how to install the oil can bracket on the firewall and I'll also be kind of demonstrating this product from Joe's Motor Tool because it's awesome. Check it out. Let's take a look at these quality products from Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts. First up, I'll show you the oil can firewall mounted. It's part number A313. Very nice stout little unit here. Very quality made. You can see the spring works very well here. It's going to hold your can in. And then the screws here that fasten it, they would be separate. They are one quarter by 20 by half inch with the coinciding lock washers and nuts. And this little gem, the Eagle Reproduction Oil Can from Joe's Motor Pool, is absolutely fantastic. That is part number A. A379. Four inches diameter at the bottom. Perfectly works well. I'm really enjoying this and the color's fantastic on it as well. The folks from Joe's Motor Pool sure care about what they make as you can see here and these are all available at Ron Fitzpatrick G Parts as well as the full Joe's Motor Pool line. Let's install the bracket on the MB tub. I'll point out here to you the factory holes. If you don't have the factory holes for some reason then you can measure from the outside or the inside lip here of the tub I'll show you and from the driver's side the first hole would be located at seven and a half inches and then the second one at nine and a half inches and from the top they are both located at six and three eighths inches. The hole should be drilled large enough to just fit a quarter by twenty inch screw bolt. I'll show you how the bracket orients here. The tab in the back will face up as shown so you can see the two little cleats. If you're looking at the spring you have it upside down. Next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and install two of the screws into the holes and then we'll slip them into the holes on the tub. Here's where it's going to get a little tricky. You're going to have to hold this on with your hand and reach around into the inner side or back side of the tub and install your lock washers and nuts. I'll switch hands here and hold this on and I'll go ahead once again install the lock washer first and then the nut and just put them hand tight for the time being. We'll tighten them down with a screwdriver and a ratchet just in a second here. This is the only difficult part. Once you get that nut on there and that lock washer, the second one's really easy and that bracket isn't going anywhere. Select a flat bladed screwdriver that actually fits the slot on your machine screw. I don't know why, but it's a big pet peeve of mine when I try to use a, a screwdriver that doesn't fit, and all you wind up doing is making the job harder for yourself and stripping out the head. Now I'll show you how to do this. This is a little difficult again. You have to reach around both the front side of the firewall and then the cowl there on the side, and you can use a ratchet or a wrench to tighten that nut that's on the back side. I like to clock or align my slots up and down. It probably wouldn't have came that way from the factory. I just find it makes a nice appearance, and that's the way I particularly do it. I've had a couple of folks comment on some of the videos when I do that to the screws of the bolt heads that at least the water won't sit in them. I'm going to show you underneath here the firewall as I put this lock washer and nut on. This is the location underneath the firewall. I've got some dirt underneath here, but that's okay. I'm going to wind up sanding this whole body and tub all over again when I've got everything installed, and then I'm going to shoot it down one last time. And I'm just using a ratchet here with a 7 16 inch socket to tighten those nuts. Here's the outside. Everything looks fantastic. It's all in place. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a spray can of Ron Fitzpatrick's Barrier 3 Red Oxide Primer. Just give it a little shot. I've been using this can for the duration of almost these last six videos and I still have half left. I'm just shooting the heads because I want to paint my heads and again paint the whole body tub once it's all done. I've got two light coats of the Red Oxide Primer on and now I'll move on to the 33070 Low Luster Olive Drab Paint in the rattle can as well. Again, I've been using this same can for the last six videos and still got a bunch left. Painting everything with two coats light primer, two coats on the top, scuff everything down, paint it one final time. It ought to come out perfect. When I did the body tub, originally I did use the paint that was out of the gallon cans that are also available. And I have to tell you, this rattle can paint matches that color and that finish perfectly, even when I just shoot it like this after it's been a probably three or four months now. I think it's pretty amazing they can do that with paint. I'll take you back under the cowl now and i show you where I'm painting the fasteners that are on the inside. They look fantastic, all coated up. Let's go on the outside one last time and give ourselves a nice test run with that Joe's Motor Pool oil can. It fits perfectly and is secure. I love it. As a last point, I'd like to mention that these brackets are designed to hold the 4-inch oil cans and not the smaller diameter ones, just to be aware. Thanks for watching. Little tidbits and gingerbread, as I call them like that, are just the, they're just the salt of the earth on these old Jeeps. 
And uh, you see how that's installed, pretty simple, but uh, pretty important nonetheless. When that's underneath the hood, there's a reason for it, and that's to oil you know, your uh, generator and your alternator. There's little spots that have to be dabbed with oil every now and again, so you gotta have that underneath there. It's nice and convenient that they would keep it against the firewall like this. Okay, my friends, thank you for watching the videos. If you'd like to subscribe to Team G503, you can do so by clicking that little button on there, so subscribe, and also click that little bell so you know when we release new videos. And as you see, I hold up my old jaw. Some of you might like that, some of you might not. Anyhow, until next time, my friends, keep it safe. Happy Jeeping.